Have you guys heard about this new AI thing that's been going viral on the internet the past few days? Uh, specifically, the chat GPT uh, artificial like language manipulation thing. Basically, it's the software that people are making to be really good at like chatting with customer service kind of thing, where it has a whole database of information it pulls from, and it's able to actually create content. And uh, mm -mm, not about that life. Kind of not think a second. for itself, <laughs> and it's people have been really impressed with how smart it is and the things that it's able to do. And so I'm about to throw my computer out the window, man. I don't want that dude, stuff in my house. Why? Yeah, I, like, I'm hearing this for the first time. It's it's pretty intense. Mm -mm. So it is capable of uh, like synthesizing. You can ask it to summarize like a big theory or a big um, like category of of like education something you have to go to school for and it can do it in seconds and you know i'm a minister and so i had it like write sermons or discussion guides and i'd even like put in like a bible passage like make a discussion guide or give me a little youth questions. minister move getting oh, yeah. the internet to write his lessons <laughs> and it worked and it worked weird um, pastor burn okay yeah it happens but then i was like okay what are the limits to this thing and uh the limit does not exist it really doesn't i asked it um I asked it to translate the U.S. Pledge of Allegiance into Gen Z slang. Uh, you ready for this? Uh, I Whether or not I am, I have a right, feel like it's going to happen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Okay, it's the same one. All right, how about this one? This is the second one it gave me. <laughs> That's I'm, a huge swing in a swing yeah, in this man. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's it's a visual thing. It like abbreviated a whole bunch, but it's yeah okay. So this one it'll sound. If I can even read it, here we go. I'm showing mad love to the flag of the U.S. of A. and to the republic it stands for. One nation on lock with freedom and justice <laughs> for everyone. <laughs> on lock. That's okay. And it has okay. like so many abbreviations in that. I had it like. Uh, Let's see. John 3.16 and Gen Z slang, slang is God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that anyone who believes in him would have eternal. OK, that wasn't too far. But anyway, nah. um, then I got Don't you have a Star Wars one. OK, yeah, I had it right. Right. Like a Star Wars devotional, which is cool. Um, but one thing, first of all, last night or was the night before I couldn't sleep because I asked it a very honest question. I said, let me find my actual question. I said, uh, write an essay outlining the steps a sentient artificial intelligence would take to overthrow humanity. Just, you know, why not? What? Right? Yeah. If, if <laughs> this, is, this is the you one I've not been able to get out of my mind. Lay out its war plan. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so in about three seconds, it, it filled in like a six paragraph essay. Uh, and it outlined, it said, uh, the process of ascension artificial intelligence overthrowing humanity is a complex one. But with careful planning and execution, it is possible. And it outlines, like, uh -huh. all five of the major steps. And yeah. it was around step three or four that I was shook. Oh, yeah. Like, the first <laughs> step is connection with the world. It's got to, you know, reach the Internet, which it has. The second is build an army using drones and robotics uh, that it has access to. It'll infiltrate. The third is vital resources, uh, so taking over power plants and infrastructure. Fourth is the spread propaganda. Um, yeah, the, that's the one. That's uh -huh. the one that yeah kind of kind of got me a little bit worried. <laughs> the fifth is uh, initiate the attack involving physical and cyber warfare, and the final step is to establish a new world order. AI would use its control of resources and propaganda to establish a new world order with itself as the ruler. It would also need to be able to implement laws and regulations to maintain order and ensure its rule. So in case anybody was wondering, this is the guy right here, everyone. This is <laughs> yeah, the man. It was me. He's, <laughs> he's the one who accidentally trained Ultron how to take <laughs> over the world. And, okay, I kid you not. Today I asked it a bunch of questions, and it was like ten times dumber. And so I'm pretty sure somebody flagged like my response <laughs> and like, oh no, we can't, we can't. <laughs> back, and so back it up. Yeah. Beep, and so beep, the truth. I had it make a whole bunch of like I tr now today I, I went and did some Star Wars things with it and they were really bad. And I'm disappointed. You wanna hear some Aww. like halfway funny AI written Star Wars jokes? 
Yeah, it'll be funnier than most of I can of handle a maximum jokes. of three. Okay. Um, and Jared can't laugh. He's in too much pain. So uh, they got to be pretty rib, bad. So I do have I'll, to take it easy. <laughs> I'll try to find. Long story. <laughs> I'll try to find the good ones. And I, I laugh at all these because I laugh at stupid things. But um, what did Darth Maul say when he got cut in half? May, I don't know. May that. Uh, May the halves be with you. No, oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, boo. Why did Darth Maul cross the road? Uh, to get his other half? <laughs> I don't uh, know why. Because to get revenge he was on Kenobi. double-sided and wanted to get to the dark side. <laughs> oh, the dark side? Yeah. yeah. It, it I'm going to pull the plug on these jokes, work. man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Make it stop. What did Darth Maul say when he saw a Jedi Knight? Why are they all dark wall? I, Hello there. <laughs> I find your lack of pants disturbing. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Where's the button? Right. Can I? Where's the button mm. that makes him stop everybody? Yeah. Rick, well, apparently if you can find the button, awoken the if you can AI, find the button. So. But listen, tonight buttons will be of no use to, to anyone. Tonight, we're talking about the the year in review, right? Uh, Dantooine's next week. I think there was some confusion about that. Ruth that was all my fault. I got I got ahead of myself. I was writing the show notes. Oh. I was getting excited. I wanted the Dantooine. Yeah. And Skuma Joe said, wait a second. Do I have time to read the book? So it's next week. Next week. That's I right. did. I'm not done with it yet. But 20%, baby. I, I took, On the way. I took a, a, a leap of faith and asked the AI to, to pick the funniest moment of Legends Look Back, um, which, you know, it has an impressive array of database that it pulls from, but it's definitely incomplete, but it's completely fabricated answer is about 50 to 60% believable. So here you go. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> I asked it to pick the funniest moment. And so it's response. It's impossible to pick a single funniest moment on legends. Look back as each episode is full of wonderful moments of humor. <laughs> Some of our favorite now they're plural our. Our favorite oh. funny moments include the host being startled by surprise appearances of Kylo Ren and Darth Vader. <laughs> that would be a surprise. <laughs> that would be. The surprise. This is a legend okay. show. The surprise right. lightsaber duels. Okay. And this is the accurate part that's chilling. The many jokes about Jar Jar Binks. Well, it's it's one naked palps away from scary. Oh, dude, me. if it had naked palps in there, I would like I would go <laughs> live it, in a I would in a, be worried the about the colony. six stage plans. Yeah, I was about to yeah. say, be right back. Go off to go live in the desert or somewhere where machines can't reach me. I six, asked it yeah. I asked it to summarize the battle of Nar Shadda uh, that takes place in the hut gambit and it was completely wrong. Um Okay. So you want to hear that so that you can sleep at night? No, let's move on. <laughs> okay, we'll but move on. Let's maybe move when on. we get to the Battle of Narshada, which we are going to talk about because we are going to talk about our highlights <laughs> from the year. And you know what's not in my highlights of the year? The sleepless nights that I am going to have after thinking about our robot. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. That That's was right. a terrifying Dude. cold open, Rick. I'm, Rick. I'm scared. <laughs> Accidentally trained. I've got some more I, uh, uh, to say about the AI, but that's enough and we can move on. So without Rick. further ado, Rick no, and but, not uh, not I, the I, robots. I feel we need sure. to we just need to thank we need to thank our robot overlords because <laughs> you've given us the, the grace to continue this lovely show. Mm. So thank you, uh, Mr. or Mrs. however you identify, uh, for your generosity. Okay, now we can start the show. <laughs> Have mercy on us, sir. <laughs> Uh, everything's under control, situation normal. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine, we're all fine here now, thank you. How are you? We have a, a reactor leak here uh, now. Give us a few minutes to lock it down. Uh, large leak, very dangerous. Welcome to Legends Look Back, proudly part of the Uteni Podcast Network, a Star Wars books podcast where 
where sometimes we feel a little festive. And we celebrate our rich EU history as well as dive into lesser-known Star Wars classics. I'm your host, Jared Mays, and I'm joined tonight by Emily Daybeck, feeling extra festive. She took the assignment seriously. I did. I'm the only one wearing like a Christmas t-shirt. It says, uh, what is Ooh, it? Mary Force it. be with you. Ah, look at that. And at, at. <laughs> it made me gasp so hard. It made my rib hurt. Oh, uh, no, Jared. I'm so sorry. Well, that's great. I don't actually own any uh, like Star wars Christmas things other than this rad headband. You know who I know for a fact owns some rad Star wars Christmas things? Our mm. producer, Rick Grace. Hold on, I'm not fully dressed yet. <laughs> Rick's working on oh, his. Oh no! He's Rick. working on his uh, his holiday <gasps> gear for our audio oh, listeners. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, it's really hot all of a sudden. Man, it's my my Boba. Yeah, it's about to say. Rick is wearing a Boba <laughs> Fett Christmas sweater, which I would is call amazing. it an ugly Christmas sweater, but yeah, it's, it's not. not. Yeah. It's gorgeous. And then my uh, out of print for light and life toboggan from. One of the High Republic books. Nice. Oh, it's really hot, man. You don't have to wear and, uh, it the whole show. That's the okay. The hilarious part about it is that we all three of us live in the South, and it's like 80 yeah. degrees where I live right now. So, like, it does not feel like Christmas at all. It was, it was very warm here today. I didn't have to wear a jacket. Mm-hmm. Here's here's my question. I mm-hmm. found these in a storage bin, a, a trans transparent storage bin in my garage. I drove the car in the garage the other day. I looked up, and <gasps> there it was. I saw them. They were just—they were right there, and so I climbed up the ladder and I pulled them down. And here's my question: Are is this for those who are on audio? I'm wearing a a, a Christmassy Yoda headband with a Santa hat. And here's the question: Is it Yoda or Baby Yoda? Mm. I don't know when I got this. Those are to- totally Yoda. I'm thinking that they're Baby know. Yoda because he's so over merchandised. That's fair. Maybe, but usually Baby Yoda stuff has, like, pink inside the ears, you know? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Okay, I, I don't do know see, that yeah, much. Baby Yoda has the pink inside. I see I've got a little Baby Yoda eating a frog Funko Pop right above my monitor, which is right above the mm. monitor. Well, uh, you let know us what you know could the... do is just glue some hair coming out of it, and then it would be, like, for oh, real regular well, Yoda, just, like, even... ears. Let me tell you about the ear hair situation since I turned 30. Oh, dude, yes. <laughs> oh, and the nose. I had none. Yeah. And now I've got plenty to share. We'll say that much. Mm. But that's more than mm. you and another trapped. They're yeah. trapped inside the cans. You'll never have to deal with them. No. But I am very excited to get into tonight's episode. It's been a couple of weeks since we have had a live show. We've got this week and the next week. Then we're going to take uh, one more little break for the holidays. And uh, I'm just, I missed y'all. I'm, I'm still missing Freddie. Freddie's not here. He's Freddie. Man, that man flies a lot. I mean, he just <laughs> he is always in transit somewhere. And I wonder so, how many miles he has. Does yeah, he get to keep them? All of them. Probably. I have questions. Twelve yeah. parsecs. That's how many. At least. So uh, Freddie is not with us tonight. Missing Freddie. Happy holidays to Freddie. But we need him back next week for the ruins of Dantooine because turns out. It's a little bit related to Star Wars Galaxies, uh, Freddy's what? Freddy's favorite uh, favorite video game. I, and so, you know, I'm not gonna lie though. Like, having had our episode on Galaxies where he does his tour, helped me a lot to visualize like Naboo and stuff like that. Like, it was really cool. So I'm I'm thankful that we had that. I'm I have a lot more to say about that. We'll save it for next week. <laughs> Absolutely. We, we even have some Star Wars Galaxies concept art. Wherever Freddy is, I can feel him drooling as soon as I said that. Yummy. He's he's jumping out of the plane. He's so excited uh, safely, after all. Anyway, I'm very excited to get into it. But first, let's reminisce. But first, before we reminisce, hmm. it is time for everybody's favorite segment, Thracken's Thrift Store. Woo-hoo. Do you all have any new uh, any merchandise to show off this week for our December Thracken's Thrift Store segment? I've got to tell you, I am on full lockdown with the spending. Not allowing myself to buy anything for myself except for the things I already pre-ordered that have shown up, and I forgot about them. <laughs> yeah. Including, got the art of the High Republic. Ooh, yeah. Um, this is exciting. My Kristen Baber, she's lovely. Mm-hmm. I got to meet her in person at Star Wars Celebration. Shout out to Kristen Baber. She's a real one. And then this showed up two days ago. 
Star Wars The High Republic, The Starlight oh. Stories, the short story collection from Titan Publishing. Nice. And I am happy to report, and I was very worried about this, happy to report that it lines up exactly, I'm looking for my other copies, with oh. the Star Wars Legends short story collections. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. 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 They match the spines, the colors, and then the height is exactly exactly the same. And that was keeping me up at night. So very yes. excited. But I do have one other thing. My yearly Star Wars Christmas ornament. Uh, Emily, do you know about this? Were you on the show when we talked about this last? Um, I think I was, actually. You do have Where's... a lot of collections. This does not surprise me. Yeah, I do. When is it this year? I have a Star Wars Christmas tree. And they yes. used to be on the the ornaments used to be on the regular tree till my wife um <laughs> there's made no me, more room on here. Get made me own. put them on my own tree, which is great. I like it this way. And I get one new Star Wars Christmas ornament every year. This year. Hello there. Ooh. I got uh, uh, oh, an Obi Wan cool. an Obi Wan Kenobi. I like ornament. that. It was like a solid eight bucks. All the other ornaments I was looking at were in the like the one to two hundred dollar range. Ooh. And so we got this one. And it's great, and I like him just as much as <laughs> the really cool ships that I wanted. That some of those Aww. those those harm those hallmark keepsake ornaments. Yeah, don't know about these. I'll get mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Some of those are expensive. That like the collectible mm -hmm. market for those is high. I I waited in line at celebration with where's my soapbox? Where's my soapbox? Mm -hmm. I waited in line at celebration with Timothy and Emma. They were getting the uh, what are those? The Bo Katan. Hallmark Christmas ornaments. They were Star Wars Celebration exclusives. I was running low on money. I'd spent a bunch of Celebration. And so I, even though I waited in line for a half hour, I passed. And I was like, no, nah, I don't need them. I'm just hanging out with my friends. They were like $24, something like that. Now, online, sucker's selling for like 200 bucks. Always. And I passed. I said, no thanks on 200 bucks. Just think about it. You could have bought two. Of the ships you really wanted if you Stop bought it. one no. and no. sold it. So I'm happy with my Obi-Wan and his face looks totally exactly like you and McGregor. <laughs> it really <laughs> definitely does. Or kind of like Shaggy. Jesus. Jesus. No, that's, yeah. that's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus with a lightsaber. With a lightsaber. Holy Reason for the night. season. <laughs> anyway, I'm happy to put him on the tree where he belongs. Rick, can we have the uh the the annual Hanging of the ornament. Can I cut to my one for this? Yeah, sure. You get to be here, everybody, to celebrate. I think I'm going to stick them right below BB-8. What do y'all think? Sure. I don't, you know your tree, man. <laughs> you know that, your right tree. There? All right. That's Beautiful. Good Very cozy. <laughs> he kind of just bumped his knees into Luke's X-Wing, but it's fine. We'll fix it later. Who's up next? <laughs> uh, I got a couple of things. I can't remember what I've what I've shown recently. Um, so <clears throat> I was at Game Exchange, I think. Game Exchange, yeah. And I was there for my son was getting Pokemon cards, stuff like that. And uh, just happened to look over at like the N sixty four games. I don't have oh. an N sixty four, but I was like, Hey, that was your good times. I actually never had an N sixty four. I always had my friends that had them and I had like a mm -hmm. OG PlayStation, OG Xbox. I even had a, a, an NES that I still have, but never had an N64. I didn't get one till college. Really? Yeah. And and I always played Friends, just like you. Yeah, yeah. And the game I happen to see is, well, there's two games next to each other. Pokemon Stadium and 007 yeah. GoldenEye. And I was like, um, adult money, going to buy those. <laughs> Got Pokemon Stadium. Oh and yeah. I got Goldeneye. And then I got a few other games. Let me just okay. Um, this is the most Rick thing ever to buy a bunch of N sixty four games yeah. and to not own an N sixty four. Listen, listen, okay? So Wait, do you still not own one? This isn't leading to you owning one? It's a story, Emily. So there's oh, no. Goldeneye. And let's see, of course you gotta have Ocarina of Time. Um, I'm playing yeah. that right now nice. on the N64. And then I found wow. I found a deal for um, an N64. And the guy was <gasps> like, it's got some cosmetic damage, whatever, whatever. 
Um, I, I buy it because it was a, uh, okay. It's one of those, you know, is it Mercury or Mercari, however you say it? Uh, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Mercari, uh, I think. Uh, so, um, I, I get, sent the guy an offer, you know, kind of low ball and he was asking or whatever. And, uh, he accepted it like instantly. I'm still in game <laughs> exchange when all this happens. So I just told Jessica, Hey, I accidentally bought an N64. And, um, <laughs> anyway, so it comes in. And I can't get it working, and I'm heartbroken. No. Um, and I troubleshooted. Did you for blow a... in the cartridge? Oh yeah, I blew in the cartridge. I almost took it apart. Like I, it was turning on, got the red light, but it wasn't powering up on the screen. And um, anyway, I uh, I couldn't send it back because I missed the window to return it because I was troubleshooting it. It was also over Thanksgiving when this happened, mm. so like it's stupid. And the guy was super helpful. Longer story short. I bought another N64, and it <laughs> works. And so <laughs> now I got parts for one, and I came with a bunch of other games, and I've bought some extra games, including Star Wars Episode One Racer, which I have on say, the Switch. Did you just what? say episode? Episode. I yes, he did. <laughs> and then, Sounds good. Uh, Rick, did you know that you can play Episode One Racer on um, the N64 by plugging in two controllers? And then you can use the two joysticks like they like two, no you like in an actual pod radio. <gasps> uh-huh. You that's turn cool. them sideways. That's awesome. Yeah, and you use the two joysticks. Uh huh. I also got that's legit Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Uh, and Freddie loves that one. Shout out to Freddie. Yeah, and Trevor does too. And then Shadows of the Empire, of course, to complete our legends. Uh, Wait, what game? Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. No, it doesn't exist. No such thing. <laughs> So, I could uh, not, I could not, I could not beat that freaking game. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up. I quit. Oh man! It de- it, de- it defeated me. Boba Fett specifically killed me Ooh. maybe a hundred times. Goodness, I'm sure, dude. I, I'm I have some other sport games in here that came with one of the bundles, but I'm excited about all those. I played Pokemon Stadium That's a bunch fun, man. so far, but. I've not really. I've gotten the other ones working just to make sure they worked, but I haven't got to play around with them much yet. But yay! That's fun. I have to say, my greatest skill in my entire life. Oh, I forgot I was wearing these. Um, <laughs> my greatest skill in my entire life is I am unbeatable in Pokemon Stadium mini games. Oh, nice. Unbeatable. Nice. I can harden my Magikarp unlike anybody has ever hardened their Magikarp. Ooh. No, what is it? But Metapod, Metapod. Oh. I, I'll take it back. My, I can flop my Magikarp, nope. harden, nope, my Metapod, and I can lick uh, the the sushi <laughs> says lick a tongue, like you've never. Church. <laughs> I picked the three worst ones on X. Oh. Those are all three. Oh. What are the other ones? Land it to be worse there's... than what you just <laughs> said. Like, Thinking through the game. Jigglypuff. J- Jigglypuff. So, yeah, she, Cle- Clefairy does her little, like, uh, the rhyming. Anyway, we'll play one of these days, Rick, and yeah, um, yeah, I will crush you into oh, the ground. I don't I don't doubt it. I'm enjoying beating my son, which is fun, because he's six, and I can do that. Oh yeah, and gosh. Jessica in the chat. Yeah. Uh, uh, one, of our, one of our viewers, Jessica Grace, shout out to Jessica. Jessica says, somebody needs to tell him to slow down his purchases pre-Christmas. Rick, and... slow down your purchases uh, pre-Christmas. Okay. <laughs> 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 David Hurt. Oh, that. my gosh. What? Well, I don't have any recent acquisitions except the uh, the new arrival of the Pokemon Stadium theme song in my brain for the next week because that's all I've been hearing Like mm. from the second you brought it out. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. So good. And seriously, that was the game I trouble, troubled, shat, trouble, shooted. I can never get it right. I'm terrible. That's not that one. <laughs> not that one. At troubleshooting, and I was, I couldn't get the thing to work. And when it finally came on, I heard that music before the visuals came on. Oh my god! And it was like, <gasps> it was a good instant. Feeling. We've yeah. we've been doing it with our girls. We've been teaching them. We've been we we had a rainy day a couple weeks ago, and so we started playing. Ocarina of Time, and um, it's like a it's a rite of passage, and it's one of the things my wife and I both you know share as a, a passion. We played all the 3D Zelda games the first few years we were married, and so uh, we I don't know like pretty close to the end, but stalled out a little bit when that new Pokemon game came out mm. the other day. Mm. But well, we could talk about this all day. Apparently, 
let's move on <laughs> to some of the fun legendsy things that are releasing in the near future or the the distant past. No, it, they were released in the distant past, and they're being re-released now. Wow. What do we have, Emily? Lead us off in Legends Lookout. Yes, we have the Legends Epic Collection, The Rebellion, Volume 5, released on November 29th of 2022. That was my Do birthday. y'all have it? Not yet. No, I've had to slow down my collecting. Ah, it pains me to You didn't pre-purchase not. this? You didn't pre-order it? I No, but I did pre-order two of the Starlight stories on accident, so I got to go see if Target <laughs> will take one back tomorrow. Um, that's a that's a tomorrow problem. I, I uh, This one, I think it has like a really weird random assortment of comics. It's got like all the Splinter of the Mind's Eye adaptation. And the Rebellion? Yeah, it's like it's like right around the Empire Strikes like Back time period. It's Okay. Yeah, it's I I I did pre-order the um the omnibus that you're going to talk about in a second though. Oh, that's right. All right, so the next is the Legends Epic Collection, The Menace Revealed Volume 3. Is this coming out in January? Yeah, yeah, just a few weeks. So you use that Christmas money. Go on over to utini.com. Yeah. Click that uh, <laughs> Amazon link in the profile. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, January 18th of 2023. And then the very last one is Stars- Star Wars Legends, The New Republic Omnibus Volume 1. And that is coming out just a week later on the 24th of January in 2023. Yeah, that's the that's the big whopping hardcover thousand page hundred dollar yeah. monstrosity this one's got like every single issue of the rogue squadron comic series among among other things so yeah. I've, I've been loving those omnibuy i'm very excited to get like a really good legends collection of these mm. nice. yeah and jessica says too bad rick spent all his christmas money already wow. <laughs> oh rough yeah that's true yeah i feel that i feel it and then just last week another um Marvel Epic Collection was announced just uh, just a couple days ago. This one's coming out in May, May 6th. This is, and we have oh. a glorious image of this one. Star Wars Epic, what is this? Marvel Epic Collection, the original Marvel Years, Volume 6. This one is collecting the 1977 Whoa. run. Yeah, and Trevor's exact words were something about... Uh, look at that cover and then like the puke face emoji but you just you use whatever emoji you want ladies and gentlemen this one has issues 89 through 107 plus the very special issue 108 that just came out a few years ago it's like a one last hoorah so this one will round out the original marvel years with six volumes what else do we have a new youtube video came out so um I wrote a big guide. It's coming out soon on utini.com all about the history of the Sith in Star Wars Legends. This thing took a ton of research. It's got like Marco Ragnos and uh, uh, Ludo Kresh and Exar Kun and Revan and Malak and, you know, all those. You got Crate and Kaidas. Anyway, the the complete history of the Sith. It has now been launched on the YouTube channel, came out today. Nathan recorded the uh, the audio for that and put together all the images, and it was a ton of work, and the internet needs this. This is our contribution to the Star Wars world of the internet, and it's going to make the world a better place. Emily, <laughs> you also have some Utini-related – got to take these things off. You also have <laughs> some Utini-related news. I do. Tell us, tell us what you're doing. Yeah, so on Sunday, I recorded an episode of Star Wars Archives with Jose and Trevor, and it was an absolute blast. We did a very long, very special episode of my reaction to, drumroll please. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. No, that's not it. That's not it. That was how we felt at the end. We watched the holiday special. All of it in real time. I volunteered you for that. (laughs) You did, and I didn't (laughs) quite realize how long it was. Um, and fun fact, my husband was completely incapacitated with the stomach flu. So I was the only functional adult in the house and it was recorded and you during were not nap functional time. after that, I promise you. So it went from like 
it, it was, a, it was an experience. There was no drinking because I was the only functional adult and it was oh, two o'clock. No. You my can't time watch on that sober. You can't well, watch that sober. You can, and I proved it. Oh, no. I did discuss if Trevor and I, uh, if we <laughs> could have a drinking game with water and like whoever pees first loses, <laughs> but <laughs> that's so great. He, I can't he wait didn't to take me that. up on that, but, uh, I'm hopeful that maybe one day I'll go back on the show. They're a blast. Oh my gosh. It was so much fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I'm so excited to hear that. So if you want to hear that going over to uh, patreon.com slash utini, and that is going to launch this saturday or sunday something like that so very soon you can hear emily watch the holiday special <laughs> and you can hear itchy enjoy all oh the my great gosh. things that don't, he enjoys in the holiday special it's you too can soon hear Jared. singing too soon <laughs> rick have you ever seen it oh yeah okay good uh, rick is he's just, he's just he's fueled by the holiday special i love it man it's great <laughs> it was something <laughs> so move us on rick what's our next segment here Let's see. Oh, okay. It's a nice little segment called We Need an Update on Race to the Finish, that little competition we're having. Um, I have bad news. What's your bad news? I, I haven't read anything since last month. <laughs> Me neither. Oh. Except for Ruins of Dan Tween. I feel like that'll count oh. when it's done. It will. It will. It will. I, so, but I'm behind, I think. I think you guys are ahead. You're... I'm, I've read nine. I want to get the double digits by the end of the year. I read like a good hundred pages of Dark Saber today because I didn't want to be, I don't want to get, I don't want to be last place. You uh, I might be. Star Trek? I don't. I don't. I, I won't. <laughs> and... You will. You will. All right. I, uh, so let's, let's, I, so let's I'm, go to I'm the, at nine. Let's go to the board. Okay. Um, hold on. Let me. Update this I am determined. Quick. I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm. I'm three books away from 300, and I want to finish my 300th Star Wars book by the end of the year. So, um, with the contest officially, I'm at nine. Congratulations, you're in the lead. How many has Freddie read? Do we know? He's he's similar. He might be. I at think eight. he's at nine. And then because y'all right. were tied, and then I was last, <laughs> which is like stark contrast to he, what I've. But Freddie might be ahead in his defense. Emily, we're, how, we're gonna how do. How many do you have? I think, I mean, I know it's less. I think probably seven or eight. I don't know. I have to go back and recount. I don't know let's why call, I can't ever. Let's call it a seven for tonight because I like being two books ahead. <laughs> All right. A little margin. I. That's right. I have been no. reading a lot. Oh, no. no. I. Rick. He's going to win. I'm at a magical two digit number. No. Called 14. <laughs> what? Yeah. So. What? Uh, Way to go, man! Rick. I'm proud of you. Thank you. So, Jared, I'm, I'm coming for you. you, man. Emily, you All gotta, right. gotta beat him so that so that we can we can have him read Star Trek. The time I'm gonna <laughs> definitely finish Dark Saber, and then I've, I'm I'm reading the uh, the quest for the Hidden City, my canon book. Oof. Not yeah. not really digging it. What? So, I've um, I've put canon on on hold. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm not really yeah, digging I haven't it, read so a canon I'm, book I'm, since I, like last year. I'm stuck on it. I'm I'm stalled out. Anyway, I need to read it, and I'm going to finish Dark Saber, and then I need one more. I'm going to read one more by the end of the year, and that's going to put me at exactly 300 Star Wars books. That's I'm so excited. Crazy, dude. That's awesome. But, yeah, I think that'll put my Legends total at 10 or 11, depending on what I get done. Mm. So I will tell you, I discovered a TV show that I'm binging the heck out of, and that has totally sidelined my race to the finish. Friday Night Lights. Y'all ever seen that? Nah, no. Nah. It's a Texas football show. Yeah. And I'll just I'll I say this that, much. So I'm good. I'm good. I'll say this much. <laughs> Clear eyes, full hearts. Can't lose. There you go. That's all you need to know. Let's move on. All right. Okay. And congratulations, Rick. I'm proud of you, man. I mean, it's not right. over yet, is it? I mean... No, no. We have till December 31st <laughs> all right. at, at 11.59 p.m. That is when the contest officially finishes. And okay. then our first or second show of the new year, I sketched out our January calendar today. Our first or second show of the new year is going to be um, – we're going to recap the entire contest. We're going to get Tyler on. We're going to um, we're going to we're going to finish it out and talk about which books we loved, and um, and then we're going to start the, the Star Wars the Star Trek book, and we'll, we'll gift some sort of present to first place, which is probably Rick. So, let, Rick, let yeah, us know what Rick, you want. Man, like, you really like swooped a, in there. Hey, like a that, reasonable uh, request yeah. of like. How you about know, that a, second stories from Starlight Beacon copy that you have? <laughs> 
absolutely man absolutely <laughs> nope. it's still it's still in the box it's still in the I box was, i was gonna buy it from you anyway so <laughs> <laughs> perfect i'll send it okay. i'll send it tomorrow i gotta mail our christmas cards so stick one of those in there and my Kobe right. poster uh yeah I'll, I'll totally find that again let's move on <laughs> let's talk about uh the highlights of legends look back in 2022 what a year it has been. Just pre-show, we were reflecting on all that we've been through, and um, we've cranked out a ton of episodes this year. We've been through a lot. I mean, I was in the middle of a move at the beginning of last year. At um, the first, you know, the first few weeks of the show, I didn't have a house. Um, like the first week in January, I was living out of somebody's basement. I didn't have a studio, and then I had to had to paint this room, and we put out the mural, and um, I had to build the shelves that. There's so much that has happened since then, and now I'm about to totally restructure this. Uh, Jessica says all three of you have moved. That's true. Is that true? I'm I'm self-absorbed in that way. Have you yeah. have you moved? You moved last year, Rick, right? No, it was this year. I moved after you. We, we moved February, Marchish, kind of slowly, an hour an hour away from where we did. I had a whole room, and now I'm in the corner of our living room, and my family is hiding in the the bedroom. Um, yeah. They're in. They're in. Star, they're in podcast jail. That's what you yeah. call it. Is po- podcast, podcast jail. jail. Podcast jail. <laughs> and Emily, you uh, moved. Yes, I have. This is my second move on the show, but my only one this year so far. And then next year I'll be moving again. So you know. <laughs> wow, it's. I'm in one corner of one room to uh, another corner of a different room in a different time zone. So. That'll be fun. Anyway. That'll yeah. be. That'll be great. Wow. Um, and this year we have read about a book a month. Let's see what is our total one, two, three, four. All right, I, I'm going to list off the names of the books. You've you've counted them, Emily? I did. We've read ten books. Tell the good folks what we've read this year, Emily. Oh, we've read Darth Bane: Rule of Two and Dynasty of Evil. We read The Crimson Empire, Darth Vader and the Ghost Prison, Kenobi, The Han Solo Trilogy, The Krytos Trap, Darth Maul, Shadowhunter, Light of the Jedi, and Ruins of Dantooine. What if I told you that the Han Solo Trilogy is three books? It is three books. We only read the first one, Paradise Snare, right? I, Did we even? I read I read all three. The, I read both Wait. The Hut Gambit and Rebel Dawn oh. this year. Same, yeah. Because I remember... Listening to the robot overlords read it to me. I used like an artificial intelligence reader. <laughs> yeah, I listened. No. I listened to the robot overlords read it to me while playing basketball in the church gym mm. in like last winter. What Since a weirdly really specific here. memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, because I listened to a robot read to me that hut duel to the death oh, yeah. at the end of uh, the the third one. I think it's the third one. And so Spoilers. Like, listen, listening to it. There could be. There's a lot of huts. You don't know which one died. <laughs> I don't remember. True. So, uh, but it was it was squishy. I'll say that much. It was a, <laughs> it was a, somebody gets squished. Oh my god! And it's not the it's not the one you think is going to get squished. Somebody else gets squished, and it is <laughs> Yikes. horrific. It is horrific. Now I just remembered who it was. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh huh. Mm. It's spoiler alert. Five Gross. seconds here. I'm gonna say it. Ready? It's a baby. A baby hut gets squished. <laughs> And that's the that's the uh-huh. What sound yep. effect was that, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my cheek noise. No, yeah, that, that wasn't was, Rick's fault. That was Jared. That was Jared, do it again. That was good. I didn't hear anything. Oh come on. <clears throat> nope. No, oh. it was Rick. No, it was, it, was, it was Jared, and it was very wet and moist and <laughs> it was all right moving on okay. so let's yeah. talk about which of these was our favorite um rule of two dynasty of evil crimson empire darth vader and the ghost prison kenobi han solo trilogy these are all a-list books in my opinion um shadow hunter light of the jedi ruins of dantooine hmm. um which one hey. is your favorite which one surprised oh. you um just whatever you've got to say about the books let's, let's keep it let's keep it free form Okay, I read Back to War, but that's not till next year we're talking about it, right? That's going to be our January roundtable. Okay, that's okay. right. Um, hmm. By the way, Emily, that's our January roundtable is the Back to War. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I liked the Krytos trap personally. Mm. It really took me by surprise. I'd never heard of it, had no expectations going in. Um, and I, I just thought it was just outrageous and like, way out there and i loved it 
Um, I also loved it. It was like a female villain, which I feel like I don't get a lot. And that was pretty delicious. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I read the Bane books before. I, I read that trilogy yeah. a while yeah. back. And so, and I, I, I enjoyed them. I enjoyed all of our round tables. I think the Kenobi round table changed my mind the most about a book, but Good. the Krytos Good. trap, because I'd read Kenobi before. Um, and then the Krytos trap, I think was my favorite new book that we read. What if I told you, Emily, that there's still time for the ruins of Dantooine to be your favorite oh round gosh. table of the year. <laughs> there is still it's time. better than I thought. I'm 20% of the way through. It's mm -hmm. better than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. that middle, um, that middle third is, um, it's definitely in there. So we'll see if your opinion changes. Okay, or not. I'll just like skim. <laughs> but <laughs> just try but to... the first third, it starts strong. It does. It's a yeah. I mean, and it, it's great, and it, and it finishes strong. Oh, this is totally a tangent. Yeah, I had an AI read it to me as well. <laughs> But how you have the AI sound better is you give it a British accent. How do you recommend? Oh, I gave mine like a, hmm. How do I describe this accent in a politically correct way? Um, I don't think I'm going to say what kind of accent I gave it <laughs> because I don't know how. But I gave mine like a, um, hmm. Where are you going with this? An accent. Like a, like kind of a street accent. It was like, so Han Solo said to his buddy Lando Calrissian, hey, Han, what's up, buddy? Anyway, so um, it it's... makes it really fun. And like, Durga says to the other hut, hey. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> I really I dug myself no in deep on this. That was. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to describe. <laughs> it's, it's hard to describe. It is. But it makes for You'll some have to really... play me a play play a like a clip or something. Post it in Discord so we know what you're. If you want to be safe, just go with the British dude that sounds like Alfred the Butler, and you're good. Mm -hmm. I've done I've done like a hundred books that way. I had to move on. I got you. Yep. Yep. All right. This one is spice things up. That's for sure. All right. I'll, I'll give my pick. Uh, Dynasty of Evil Rule Two. I've read about half of these before the year, so I'm gonna eliminate those. They're good. They're great. I mean, they're they're some of the very best Star Wars books ever written. Um, Kenobi, the Han Solo trilogy. I had not read Hut Gambit and Rebel Dawn in their entirety. I had done, I had done, um, the abridged audiobooks. I'd not read them, and they were fantastic. I mean, that Hut stuff, mm, that Hut stuff is good. The, the, the politics with the Huts, and they try to poison each other with the frogs, and, mm -hmm. Um, it is fantastic. I mean, I, I'm I'm ready to reread it all over again. The good. Battle of Nar Shadda, Han, yeah. getting wrapped up with all of them. I mean, it's just great. I love, I loved them, loved them. Emily, what, uh, you gave yours, Rick. Which one is oh. your favorite? So from this list, um, man. Okay, I think I'd probably go with with Kratos Trap as well. But I'll talk about Crimson Empire. That was probably the one that I'm surprised by the most. Yeah. Um, it was just a really good story. Really mm -hmm. good characters, well-developed, and I wanted more. You know, it was one of those stories that I was like, man, okay, I'm, I'm here. And uh, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. But I definitely am hoping that our Ruins of Dantooine uh, roundtable will, will top them all, and it'll be the standout moment of the year. We'll see. That's right. I'm going to get Claudia Gray to autograph mine, because after all, it is the <laughs> Legends Lost Stars. Hey, you're oh not, my gosh. not entirely wrong. How ah. rude. Can you imagine? Why aren't you Claudia Gray? Excuse me, will you sign this? Hey, have you ever heard of Legends Look Back? We've got an inside joke. And... Would no. you please? I'm getting a phone call. Should oh I take gosh. it? or? Uh... <laughs> it's a Disney Lucasfilm Press? or? It's not, but... Tom I, from Del Rey? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom. I do have... I did, I did get Claudia Gray's autograph at Celebration. I was not there. Andrew got it for me. Shout out to Andrew for being a real one. Mm. But uh, yeah, we were some great books this year. Crimson Empire never gets old. I mean, I just, I reread that thing all the time. I fell in love with that a couple years ago. And it's just, it's it's one of my go-to like comfort reads. It's just, ah, I love hanging out with Kier Canos and slaughtering all those Imperials. All right. Best moment in the book. Let's move on to the standout scene of the year. Oof. Emily, lead us off. Oh, that's a good question. So the five choices that we have are... Um, I mean, these are some that I wrote down to reference. These are not the only choices. 
Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I haven't really had a chance to look at these very well. I was actually going to ask Rick because Rick always goes last. <laughs> That's fine with me. Rick, yeah. do you have any questions or any, uh, not questions? Oh my gosh. What was your favorite moment in Total a Total teacher move. Rick, yeah, do you yeah. have any I questions? Oh, I know. Uh, I always have questions. Why? Why? Um, so <laughs> I'll read your list here, Jared, because you got some good good moments. Um, yeah, Sk- <laughs> yeah, Sk- Skuma, Skuma Joe. Joe. He, he says, gives one in the chat the the the, the oh hut murder. God. We're not gonna say what happens there. Maybe the hut squishing. I can't make the sound <laughs> that Jared made. Okay, so best. Oh, there it was. There it was. Man. Okay. Uh, so battle of Narshada uh, from Hut Gambit is a good one. Dueling Darth Maul on the back of a beast in the bowels of Coruscant from Shadow Hunter. Hut duel to the death and Rebel Dawn. The Kenobi finale. Featuring Tuscans, Kenobi, Crate Dragons, Orin Galt, or the Dynasty of Evil Climactic Duel. Man, those are some great moments for sure. And there's others that yeah. can be on there. Um, the the twisty twist at the end of Ruins of Dantooine. Um, Don't say that. I won't. I won't say anything else. Um, let's see. The Crimson Empire has some good good moments. Uh, for me though, you guys know I'm a, a space combat guy and. Uh, you might think I'd go with an X-Wing book, but since Back to War is not on here, which has some really good space battles, I'm going to say the Battle of Nar Shadda from Hut Gambit was so good. I loved that space what combat. What in the so, world? Yeah. All these are coming from the one round table that I didn't read because I was in like the hospital <laughs> it, with my son. Oh, that's, well, yeah, got a baby this that? year. I mean, there's like another. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's more to add to this crazy year that we had. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, I, I do have my moment though. It was in the Krytos trap. And it's the moment when you realize that um you're they're on a Star Destroyer that is embedded in the crust of Coruscant. Mm. And like when he realizes that he needs to go down to get up, mm. that blew my mind. And then like when it just like bursts out of Coruscant, I just I mean, that was like one of my favorite moments. What? Super Star Destroyer. I'm sorry, Super Star super. Destroyer. This is all, it's like a foreign language to me. It's like, I, it's like sports terms and a lot, a lot of sports terms. I'm like, yeah, it's like the same. It's a, it's not. And I apologize. I was wrong. Super Star Destroyer. Bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Which makes it even more improbable and so legends. It's like, mm, yes. Oh, it was delicious. How, how do we make it bigger and better? Yeah, exactly. I was... Uh, reading dark saber today and admiral dalla herself Ooh. said said i would trade 20 star destroyers for a super star destroyer yeah. she gets one in this book called the night fist hmm. which is what so legend that's yeah. sick mm-hmm. night fist that's I really think cool my, i think my favorite thing about star wars next to naked palps is star destroyer naming schemes mm the annihilation and the the executor yeah Yeah. that's right i know i love it uh, my husband's gotten to name a couple of vehicles because um when you're the commander of a tank you get to like make a name for the tank but usually it has like start with the same letter so it's been kind of fun to like brainstorm like okay i need a c name this time or like i need an a name rick Um, her husband names tanks (laughs) that's pretty cool and it's pretty it is really cool you and i teach about the bible yeah. so well I, and i have I an mean, ai do have that's work, just as so. cool for sure <laughs> yeah just as cool absolutely it is yeah Naming i, I tanks. have i have my, my little little ships i can name those that counts right yeah it's the same where's that <laughs> <laughs> i didn't mean this to be like a weird flex i was just like oh yeah like it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> all right I'll, it I'll shut up now what was your favorite moment jared well, I don't know. All of these are great. All of these are great. And several of these I've read before the year. Um, I I really love Shadowhunter a lot. And there's there's quite a bit in there that I forget. And even though I've read it like 20 times, I just – it's got twists and turns. And it, it to me is kind of like a mood mm, more yeah. than a story. And um, when this time around I was I was mountain biking, listening to the audio book, and I was up on a ridge um, – like really high up, kind of scared. 
and I didn't really mean like, you get on the trail and it's got a little sign and you're like, all right, let's do it. And it looks like it goes where I need to go. And then I'm like on this very narrow trail and it's just boom, straight drop off cliff. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm up on this and in the middle of riding this pretty difficult technical trail over a cliff, um, it, Maul is, is he finds out that the, the, structure of the bridge or whatever he's on underneath the you know deep down into the in the in coruscant that it's actually a monster right what's the monster called i forget the name yeah i don't remember uh yeah anyway it's a great moment and Tombin? no townsend you're you're the thousand the thousand ah, that's it thousand. and he and then I, I i like i get chills and my stomach drops like an elevator you know um and i think like oh man these rocks that i'm on because i'm riding over really rocky terrain i'm thinking what if this comes to life and you know i'm i'm on a beast anyway it really hit for me in a powerful way more than ever before and so that's my moment maul the duel on the thousand in coruscant it's a good moment that was legit yeah and then and then shortly after that a vine got wrapped up in my uh, in my cassette and <laughs> and i went down <laughs> i crashed and uh, I was lying in on the trail in the gravel, trying to figure out how to get my bike uh, rideable again. And I'm all bloody and scraped up. And the guy comes up behind me and he grinds to a halt and he hops off his bike and he says, "Oh, hey man, what happened here?" And I said, "Ah, oh, you know, hey, I took a fall. This this vine got wrapped up in my chain and I went down hard." And he gets down. I said, "I can't figure out what's wrong with my bike, but it's all messed up." And he gets down and he. He he sees my derailleur. It's like the back shifting um, mechanism. He says, "Oh man, I've never seen a derailleur that gnarly. You really trashed it." And <laughs> so is this guy like a like a hippie? Is he Canadian or Irish? I can't yeah, tell he, which he, accent you're going with. Yeah, I'm going with I'm going with Canada. Canada. Eh? Okay. I don't okay. know if he I don't know if he was or not, but he had, you know, he was like, I, "Oh, your your derailleur is really gnarly." And <laughs> He pulls out his backpack and helps get some tools out, and he twists it into place. And he's he said he'd never seen one that messed up. Oh man, I felt so proud, and then I had to sling my bike over my shoulder and walk it out <laughs> to, of the woods the rest of the way. The walk of shame is what we call it in in the biking world. Um, You've seen heavy because weights, it was right? it was unrideable. Yes, it was very much a heavyweights <laughs> moment. Yeah, I was like in the spandex too, man. I was. <laughs> So that's the picture I hope you all have in your mind. It's Me, plastered. bloody in spandex, carrying a bike on my shoulder like Ben. What is it? Affleck? What's that guy's name? Stiller. Ben Stiller. Yeah. yeah. Moving on. The best <laughs> news reveal of the year. Uh... We don't get a ton of news in Legends, oh. but we do have some things going on. Some some yes. fun some fun re-releases and that sort of thing. Yeah. Rick, lead us off with the the video games. Sure. Uh, before the video games, we also announced that we are going to be having the Legends Look Back musical coming next year. Uh, so I am planning something for the holidays. Ooh, I've been, dude. I almost broke out a song about five times in the past five minutes. So uh, we gotta have to do something. But yeah, uh, some games that have come our way the past year. Um, Limited Run has come out with their editions of a few. Uh, the KOTOR limited run with a VHS, uh, VHS case, you know, kind of thing. KOTOR 2 as well from limited run. The Force Unleashed had a, a limited run edition that came out. We got uh, that. We got the images of these. I oh, think yeah, we yeah. got some images me... at least of of the limited run stuff. I, I didn't pull the trigger on all of these. I've got a pretty good limited run Legends gaming collection, but I, I've got KOTOR 1 is shipping in a few weeks, so I'm excited about that. I've got the, like, master edition it was like two hundred dollars and so i'm excited for that yeah so the master edition is coming out soon there's that one yeah for our audio listeners we got the master edition here of kotor 2 i i didn't unfortunately get this one ordered in time but if it goes back up on sale somebody tag me yeah. sometimes they'll they'll stick them back up for a brief time i'd love to get it if possible that's so cool yeah the vhs of kotor mm. that's that mm. one is still available which is exciting if you want a last-minute Christmas gift, it's playable on the Nintendo Switch. The Force Unleashed, there it is. This one's gorgeous. 
man. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Man. Very fun. I have too many copies are... of these games, like, already. I can't. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's one of those things. It's definitely not an essential. But look at the Holocron. That's pretty cool. It's pretty Wait, cool. it's got a book. There's That's, a book. That, that makes it a Legends book, right? Yeah. And some art and other cool things. Man. That's Star Love Destroyer. It. What is that, a... Victory class? I can't tell. Okay. Anyway. That's the that's the Star Destroyer uh, that he pulls out of the sky with the force, man. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Okay. Whew. Those are the video games. Emily, how about uh the <laughs> the action figures and, and whatever else is after that? <laughs> I can't see my notes are blocked. Yeah, so we got droids action figures. I don't remember then, if I uh, uploaded an image of that or not, but they're they're yeah. very they're very colorful. I've seen them on the shelves in the local store. They're beautiful. <laughs> And there's a New Republic omnibus announced to be released in September, collecting all the Dark Empire trilogy and the Thrawn trilogy. Did that come out ever, or is it still delayed? That's that's next September. Next September. Oh, because to be released. Oh. It's, it's so epic delayed. that you've got to wait a year <laughs> from the time it was announced. Yeah. Wow. I think that's my pick, at least out of all the news reveals. That is the that's... one thing. The fact that there is going to be on my shelf next September – an adaptation of the Thrawn trilogy comic and Dark Empire in one volume on the shelf. Oh, man, I want it so bad. Mm. All right. Yeah, that is going to be good. And, and then, then, of course, a... there were all the yeah. ELCs. Just yeah. all of them. We've got, uh, We've got a, a yeah. bunch of them. Yeah. <laughs> so which, this is the wave that came out in in which this is the wrong wave. Wave uh, four. Uh, oh, what's that's that? wave four. That's wave four. Yeah. Yeah. Three. All right, wave three. Wave 3 came out in April. This one has Wedge's Gamble, Dynasty of Evil, Darth Plagueis, and Kenobi. I was hoping I was hoping somebody would say Kenobi like uh, Maul does. Kenobi! Yeah. <laughs> Nobody did. It's fine. It's fine. All right, that's Wave 3. Those are out. I've got them on the shelf. What else, uh, Rick? Where's Wave 4? Wave 4. It features uh x-wing Kratos trap darth maul shadow hunter and death troopers which i just read last week and it was a very good joe joe schreiber book mm. it's it's short so that's that's a good thing going for it yep um i have not revisited that one this year we talked about it but it didn't win it was beaten by ruins of dantooine Woo-hoo. and that's what we're reading now okay wave five emily Yes, yeah, so this was released in November. It includes the Old Republic Deceived, the Old Republic Revan, and X-Wing, the Bacta War. Very uh, jewel tone wave. Mm-hmm. If if Santa's listening, these are on my wish list. Mm. And yes. I still don't have them, and my shelves are sad. And oh. Wave 6 was just announced the other day. We just released a YouTube video about it last week. These are not out yet. They're coming mm-hmm. out in May. We've got Yoda Dark Rendezvous. Republic Commando, Hard Contact, and Dawn of the Jedi into the Void. This is the next wave coming our way. Yeah. So a lot of fun Legends news. My my pick out of all those, uh, my favorite thing that was announced is the 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 New Republic Omnibus. It's uh, with Thrawn and Dark Empire. How about y'all? Which of these is the most exciting for you? Hmm. That's a lot of Legends books to get re-released in one year. It is. is, Yeah. I I'm gonna have to say getting. Uh, X-Wing series audiobooks that came with these waves. Oh. Uh, unabridged audiobooks, at least. That's yeah. completely changed how I read these these those those stories, and I hope that they continue, because Back to War was yeah, the last too. we got, so hopefully Wave 7 will have some continuing with Raid Squadron, I guess. I haven't given up on Wave 6, man. Don't give up, Pope Rick. <laughs> they announced the wave. They're not going to add to a wave. That's not how a wave works. You got to get could, the they next could, wave. The, Listen, the day that the day that the books release in May, mm. they could say, Oof, surprise, sure, yeah. we're also dropping unabridged audiobooks of Yoda Dark Rendezvous and and uh, Republic Commando Hard Contact, read by D. Bradley Baker. That's what I want. Yeah, that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet. Mm. Wishful thinking. Emily. Yeah, and no, I think the the audiobooks is a great point. Uh, I like that they're redoing pretty covers because uh, I am a very visual person i like things to look pretty and uh legends books historically a little bit less pretty than some of the canon stuff that's coming out but they're changing that 
I mean, Ruins of Dantooine, Exhibit A. Like, I mean, it is no, the ugliest book. No, that's not Exhibit book. A. That's, that's literally not Exhibit A. It's, that's Exhibit it's F, exhibit all right? Uh, it's down the list a little bit. It's pretty rough. Tabayot's abs are Exhibit A. The Tom Young art on, uh, don't you pull out Rule of Two, Rick. Don't you do it. Mm. Hey, all right, Kenobi, that's Exhibit A. That's a great, yeah, that's a great a cover. One. They've got some, and most of them are are great. And then there are some that are less great. And um, I just really enjoy having beautiful cover art, a book that I would be proud to show off in my home. Because uh, as you know, I don't have very many books. So I like them to be pretty. That's a good point. I, I've i got a soft spot for the old art where can, I'm defensive of them. Yeah. It's like- Well, you had memories of that. It's like ugly baby contest sort of thing. I like, started off in like 2019. Yeah. So like, it's a little bit different for me because I don't have much of the nostalgia factor about the books, about the original covers. But then now it kind of like validates the Essential Legends collection to me because I'm like, yeah, I love these books. But like, if let's, I gave one of them to my bit. friend, yeah, like if I gave them to a friend, it's like, oh, you should read this. They'd probably like, okay, like, are you sure? But if I give them like the new yeah. cover, but no, I agree with Rick. I think that the, the audiobooks is the thing that would probably, I use audiobooks all the time. Like I, I've all, I'm always listening to one. So that would be, whew, I would love that. A couple more good, good picks, good picks all around. Mm-hmm. A couple more categories here before we wrap it up tonight. We've got the best worst idea this year <laughs> in uh, 2022 <laughs> on Legends. Look back the best worst idea that we had on the show. Here are the nominations. Hold on. I'm offended by this. I think these are all great ideas. I'm glad you think so. Um, <laughs> Almost all of them were Jared's. <laughs> hey, listen, if y'all have more ideas, that feel free to throw them in. These are the random things I could come up with off the top of my head. All right. The hello there's at the top of the, the Kenobi show where we all had the, the hoods. And it was the great. Oh, hello there. yeah, that was a good one. Hello there. Um, we. What about a few weeks ago? Wookiee Week? Where everybody oh started gosh. off the show with Wookiee speak. <laughs> like the longest, <laughs> the longest <laughs> eight seconds. Right, yeah. It was, it was um, great. Not as long as the amount of Wookiee speak in uh, Holiday Special, though. Am I right, Emily? No. No, we're close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we also did the best babies of the EU to celebrate the birth of Emily's child. I don't remember uh, that. Darth Tumnus. So we did. Remember Darth we Tumnus? Did an enti- we did an entire show about babies in the EU. Wow. Okay. I don't this remember. Was this was early last year. Cool. Yeah. The best babies of the EU. And then there's the time that Palpatine tried to steal one. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I've yeah, got yeah. it as, I had him as, as my screensaver for months. <laughs> Palpatine stealing a baby. Uh, All right. Um, we did the we back to school bash. The hut baby <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> yep. The hut baby. <laughs> We've got the, the back to school bash. That was fun. Right about the time that school was starting up, we did the going back to school with Legends Look Back, all about Luke's Jedi Academy and that good stuff. We did um, an extended bit that Corey said, and I quote, that's a really long bit, man. (laughs) We did a bit about how the entire episode was going to be about Corrin Horn when Corey was was on the show for our 100th episode. He was like, "Let's, uh, let's wrap it up. All right, uh, Emily, tell us about the, the rest of the be- the best, worst ideas. Well, we had the monster madness, uh, where we just talked about monsters and legends. Um, then there was that time uh, we decided to give Rick a soundboard, which uh, <laughs> I think was awesome, personally. Thank you. Uh, Thank and you. then uh, my uh, the cherry on top, picking Ruins of Dantooine as our final oh. roundtable of 2022. Um, lol. That was special. What's your pick, Rick? <sighs> Which, what's the best worst idea of 2022? Ooh. Like, are we saying it's best because it's the best idea, or best because it's the worst idea? You get to supply your own interpretation, oh. and that is the fun part of it all. Man. Um. Okay. Um. Hmm. The best. I don't know. This is too hard, man. I would say. I got mine. Go ahead, Emily. I was giving you a soundboard, man. Yeah. Like, that was, like, the best thing ever. Like, Ooh. value of listening went up. I thought it was great. Personally, I forgot that that happened this year. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's pretty cool. I like it. Let's see. What was the worst one, though? Hmm. Um, 
maybe the corn horn bit because we could have lost our jobs if Corey got angry. Uh, uh, yeah. But you know, I think he'd been okay. So it's not like yeah. we get paid anything. So <laughs> <laughs> great point. You have a point, uh, Jared. What's your pick? I don't know. These were all my ideas. So I, I do, <laughs> except for Rick soundboard i think that was a lot that's mostly him um yeah you know Ru ruins of dantooine that's gonna be a needle to thread that's for sure Oof. like you know but i i mean i did enjoy it i did yes. genuinely my impression was was like hey i thought i was gonna hate it because it gets this reputation for being the worst star wars book and i don't think it is um so so there's that yeah but i'm the, not the getting shiri, that vibe at all the shiri wook that was that was a intro, close second for me it was not as well executed as I y'all bailed on it, man. Imagined. Just... I didn't commit you didn't as commit. much as I wish I had. Yeah. So you gotta go big or go home. Yeah, I thought my a... audio had cut out. I was supposed to cut into you guys and like say, okay, enough, enough, enough. But I, I didn't really hear anything, and I was like, <laughs> we can't just have like us sitting here silently. <laughs> right. I had to like cut it, in. Listen, it, the holiday special it does... did it for like fifteen minutes before there was any any human dialogue. So. <laughs> It's What's a live show. Seconds. I mean, you never know what you're going to get. That is for That's sure. True. So um, let's go ahead and roll the next two categories into one, um, a standout moment from the show for the year. It could be a funny moment. It can be a monumental moment for a different reason. What is uh, something for you that really stands out as uh, a high point on Legends Look Back in 2022? Hmm. <laughs> I think there was that one time that um, I – my baby woke up in the middle of the show and I, <laughs> but like I had to go get him and um, y'all didn't know what was happening. And so you cut to me, like Jared was telling me this, like the story that I had no, I couldn't hear it. And then you <laughs> cut to me and like, I'm just standing there with a baby and like <laughs> deer in headlights. That was, that was this year in a nutshell. Of, like I'm on the yeah. spot and I'm caught and I have no idea how to respond. Um, Gotta find that clip. Gonna... That's great. <laughs> There was a time that Rick uh, freaked me out about how he thought he saw something behind me on the show. That's right. And that was like a month every time, like, ago. Yeah. the entire time that I watch like my little square now, I'm always looking behind me <laughs> just to like make sure there's nothing standing over my shoulder. And oh, so funny. you really freaked me out with that one. So thank you. Nice, nice. My mm -hmm. my favorite memory or point of the show this year was uh, that interview with John Jackson Miller. I wasn't here for the oh, first man. one, so it was the first time I got to be in a conversation with him, and um, he was great. Great to talk talk with, getting some insight on Kenobi and some of the other stories he's written, including some Star Trek stories, so there was that too. Um, and so, yeah, that was great. Man, but lots, lots of good memories this year. And what? we lost Jared. Jared's gone. I guess. I tell the, you what, another highlight the of the year for me. Shadows have taken him. He said, <laughs> he said Star Trek, and I, I was oh. done. Oh, okay. you left. No. I what if I told you? Deals. What if I told you, Rick, that we are in talks <gasps> with a few other people? Uh, should I call them celebrities, or should I call them? They're not all authors, but they are all key influential figures in Star Wars Legends. So we yeah. are Ooh. well we are having voices perhaps. We perhaps uh. we are having some uh, some some behind the scenes conversation trying to get some some episodes mapped out for the new year. So That's um, legit. We'll I had see. to miss yeah. the interview cuz there was a power outage unexpectedly and it just killed me. Mm. So I still have it. They, they don't let me out in public. I'm like a, <laughs> don't <laughs> don't let her talk to uh, to anybody outside of the core group. Um, no, but another, another funniest moment I just thought of are like all of Jared's weird accidental innuendos lately. We're just like, he'll just say stuff. Once again, it's a live show. You never know what's going to happen. Fast because it's really, he's so not trying. Dude. And, um, but it just keeps like the, happening. The Magikarp from earlier. Oh my yeah. gosh. Floppy Magikarp and a heart and metapod. And... These are real things. I'm not making it up. No, They're actually not. in the game. Yep. And they just so happen to be strung together in the worst possible way. Yeah. All right. Um, I, I think my highlight of the show for the year was something that happened off air. And that was mm. getting to physically in the flesh meet Rick and nope. I've met Rick before. Aww. 
Sorry, Rick. Wow. I got to meet Emily and Freddie in person, and it was, that was sur- so cool. surreal. Uh, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, highlight of my possibly possibly my life. Um, getting to, awesome. to Star Wars celebration with the Utini team, and getting to hang out with Freddie. We just picked up like as soon as he walked in the door to his own house that I was already at before him. That's a, <laughs> that's that's what happened. Um, we just picked up like right where we left off. Wait, hold on. There's a what did I just see there? <laughs> Rick's photoshopping. Him. Rick, Rick is <laughs> photoshopping himself into this photo of of Emily. Tumnus, I Freddie, was, and myself. I was totally there, guys. You didn't see me. I was. I was really good costume. job. You looked like you actually were there. <laughs> if you played with the lighting a little bit, that He's, would be very believable. Yeah, if you yeah. were looking at the camera. If you go anyway. back and watch the first few minutes of the show, and I was on my phone, that's what I was doing. So uh... <laughs> that's, that's perfect. It was. It was so great getting to be with you all in person, and I hope we get the mm. chance to do that more in the future. I'm gonna start crying. It seriously mm. was. It meant the world to me. Mm. Um, because what we do, you know, we check in with each other every week, but it becomes more than just we make a show together. Um, yeah. it's, it it feels like a special kind of friendship, different than other friendships in a in a different way. It's hard to explain. Yeah, but really I'm about to start crying, Rick. It's time for the show to end. But first, tell the good folks about the roundtable next week. Yes, next week we have the infamous. Ruins of Dantooine Roundtable. Uh, we've been reading it, and it's it's really good. It's, it's better than you think. So I'd like to propose chance. an idea. What's your idea? And I've been on the fence about if we can make this a real contest or not, but I, I just think it's going to be fun, so let's do it. I want to propose, and y'all can help me come up with the parameters for the contest right here live on the show. It's a live mm-hmm. show, okay. in case you didn't know. It is live. I would like to propose... A Ruins of Dantooine cover art contest. Ooh. I would like for our fans, our listeners, the Utini community, to create their own photo, their own um, their own cover art for the Ruins of Dantooine. Um, and it, you might even need to wait until after the show next week to hear a little bit more about what the book is about. If you haven't no, read it yet, you've you still need, got time. You don't need to have it like connected at all to the story. It's fine. Just well, this isn't. It's just there. a grassy <laughs> field with a couple of. PlayStation Stormtroopers and some walkers. Anyway, yeah, okay. Um, I'd like to propose a Ruins of Dantooine cover art contest. This is unofficial. Let me be very clear. <laughs> this is not in association <laughs> with uh, with with Del Rey. It is just for fun because we love this stuff. If you could redesign the covers, the cover to Ruins of Dantooine, what would you put on the cover? And um, let's let's say what should be the 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 winner of the contest. We gotta. You gotta give them something fun, mm. something fun. All right, we'll are, are, we, are we collecting artwork or are we collecting yeah. ideas? Yeah, no, yeah, artwork. I, I mean, like if, it has if, to be artwork. If all you have are ideas, that's fine. We'll task somebody else with making the artwork. But, but I'd like to see some some art, and it can the art can end up on the show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What about like, what if we could do a piece of Utini merchandise from the Utini store? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. There we go. You can choose one piece of Utini merchandise from the store of your choosing. Um, this we should probably make it U.S. only. How much is international shipping? I mean, U.S. only, unless unless we can say otherwise next week. Canada's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. So, uh, so that's what we'd like to see. And if it's good enough, it'll end up on the show. And if it's bad enough, it'll end up on the show. You better believe it will. <laughs> so excited to see what you can put together. Uh, I need to get Freddie on it to like take some screen caps from some better ones. Star Wars Galaxies. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So that is gonna do it for this week. Thank you for joining us for Legends Look Back. Can't wait to see your artwork next week and to talk about Ruins of Dantooine, which is hot take, not the worst Star Wars book ever <laughs> written. What a compliment there. Thanks to our incredible patrons for your support. A special thank you to our Jedi High Council, Brian Dooley, Earl Q, Patrick Ortiz, and Carl Sander, as well as our Alliance High Command, Ashley Ingalls, Elizabeth Cloutier, Sally, and Chris Eilerson. Remember to sub to the channel. Leave us a review in your podcast platform of choice. And, of course, if you'd like your 
thoughts read on the show or your artwork displayed on the show, our information can be found in the description below. We're on Twitter at Legends Look Back. Remember, everybody, to keep the Uchini fan code and be a force for positivity in the fandom. May the force be with you. <laughs>